Welcome back people and today I am going to kick ass by explaining at a fast action pace what is the child welfare checklist. I am Philip Kedge, a retired police chief inspector, the director of the Mackenzie Friends UK network, the founder of the national campaign of hashtag like not hate and fearless family court vlogger. Nothing I say constitutes legal advice because you don't need legal advice and you don't need lawyers. I provide guidance and support as a layperson. Don't forget to like, share, subscribe and hit that notification bell. Let's do it. Well, the child welfare checklist is one of the reasons why you don't need family lawyers. You see, both CAFCAS and the Family Court will make recommendations and orders based only on the best interest of the child from the perspective of the child, which means that your personal viewpoint as a parent has little relevance. That is why spending tens of thousands of pounds on lawyers to argue what you want or what you think is right from your adult perspective is a complete waste of time and money. Don't forget your lawyer will follow your instructions, argue your perspective and has absolutely no duty of care to any child. How disgraceful is that? So, if you have a family lawyer who all too often stir the pot of acrimony and hate for their financial gain, engage in thousands of pounds of totally unnecessary work and leave people in crippling financial debt, it's time to ditch them and contact the Mackenzie Friend UK network instead. So, back to the child welfare checklist. These are the only factors that every judge and every magistrate must apply and consider when making child arrangement orders. And guess what? There is nothing in relation to those factors that represent legal arguments. They are common sense factors that a 16 year old school debating society could understand and formulate a position about. When you remove all the adult barriers and emotions, acrimony and spurious allegations based on hate, it's really not difficult to find that reasonable path through the family courts. So, in layperson terms, these are the factors that the court must consider in making any child arrangement orders. Number one, the wishes and feelings of the child. The older and more mature the child, the more weighting is given to their wishes and feelings. Waiting is typically given to a child who has attained the age of 10, but I have on many occasions seen CAFCAS fall behind the wishes and feelings of a child as young as five or six years of age. I don't personally agree with that, but it happens. Number two, the child's physical, emotional and educational needs. Pretty straightforward, really. For example, there is no point in a non-resident parent seeking 50-50 shared care when it would be a two hour round trip to take the children to school. If a child is happy and settled at a school and doing well, there would have to be very good reasons for the non-resident parent to change that school. These are common sense factors based around adult disputes and disagreements. They're not legal ones. Number three, the likely effect on any change to the child's circumstances. For example, a parent who has limited contact with their child over a long period, who then makes an application for 50-50 shared care, is very unlikely to be successful due to the significant upheaval and change in the circumstances from what the child already knows. Now, this factor may become especially relevant if the resident parent, who is usually the mother, wishes to relocate with the child to a new area, sometimes a considerable distance away from the non-resident parent. All I can say is don't be surprised if the court still allows the child to go if there are credible reasons for the mother wishing to relocate and, as a non-resident parent, you may be really up against it if the child is of a reasonable age where they can express their wishes and feelings and want to move to live with mum. Factor number four, are you taking notes? The age, sex, background and any characteristics which the court considers relevant. So this includes a child's age, cultural and religious background and issues such as disability. Without a doubt, more and more of what I'm seeing are issues being raised inside the family court in relation to things like autism, ADHD and other childhood disorders 
And around these issues, you will often hear Kafkas talking about progressing child contact at the child's pace. Fact number five, any harm which a child has suffered or is at risk of suffering? Well, this brings in so many issues and is the area that often represents the main battleground between parents with allegations and counter allegations based on inappropriate parenting, domestic abuse and coercive control. This is where the court will apply practice directions 12J, which may lead to fact finding hearings on the allegations. Please don't get me started on all of this. Go and watch my amazing family court vlogs. Factor number six, how capable the parents are of meeting the child's needs. This is all about ensuring that the parents are putting the needs of the child first. As an obvious example, can they appropriately house a child? If one parent is an alcoholic or a habitual illegal drug user, that is likely to be a problem. Now this is important to understand. This does not mean that it is an all-out competition or war around parenting. The standard of parenting that the CAFCAS and the courts apply is good enough parenting. Trying to argue that you are the better parent at doing the homework and that the other parent sits a child too long in front of the TV are not likely to be considered legitimate arguments. Lastly, the range of powers available to the court under the Act in the proceedings. This is where the court will consider the wide range of options and orders open to them to secure an outcome in the best interests of the child. This may include specific issues orders or prohibited steps orders, or even when it comes to child arrangements, whether an order is even needed. It is not uncommon that when a child reaches the ages of 14, 15 or 16, that a court will conclude that having an order would not be productive and that the child can decide for themselves. That's me done, which only leaves me to conclude by inviting you to contact me at contactfield.co.uk, your one-stop solutions-based shop for all of your family court needs. The independent and trusted members of the Mackenzie Friends UK network can assist and support you at the fraction of the cost of totally unnecessary lawyers. It would be daft really not to check it out right now. I am Philip Kedge, the kick-ass Mackenzie friend. See you again very soon.